This video is brought to you by Pro Star Tables. Hi, pool players, it's the Terminator, and welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room, I'm on the road at the World Cup of Pool here in Milton Keynes, so I thought it would be a good idea to do some road stories. Here we go. About 23 years ago, I was on a road trip solo heading into Texas. Supposedly, there was a lot of action going on there, so I was very excited. I'm driving into the first big city. I believe it was Houston. I'm walking into my first pool room, and I end up playing their local youngster, Didi. We play a set of nine ball, and after the set, he says, you know what, I'm taking you on the road. We're gonna do a trip. So I'm very pumped, I'm excited, right? And he says, I'm gonna bring one of my friends, let's call him Dave, I can't remember his name. He, it might have actually been Dave. Anyway, so that night we jump into our car and we head off into the sunset, ready to get in action. So there wasn't much going on the first couple of days. It was pretty dry. They had a couple of spots they said, wasn't much going on. And on one of these nights, we come into a pool room and you know what? the first thing we see is a metal detector. You gotta enter this pool room and you gotta go through a metal detector. Now, I got no clue what the name of this room was. Maybe some of you guys know. Please leave a comment below if you know the name here. We walk into this room, we jump on the table, I start hitting some balls, maybe we can get a game right. And all of a sudden, Dave just freezes. And he says, oh my God, he's here, he's here. And, and Didi and me were like, what, what are you talking about? What's going on? He says, he's here. The guy is here. So he, he points out to an Asian looking gentleman. He says, the last time I saw this guy, we got into a huge discussion. And he said, if I ever see you again, kid, I'm going to end your life. And now he's here. So we're getting pretty white and pale, and pale because this guy is here. And it's a pool room with a metal detector, which doesn't promise too many good things. So we're like on our toes, right? We're watching this guy and five or 10 minutes later, he heads out the door towards his car and we think, all right, he's leaving. Well, what happened next? He walks back into the pool room and if you've ever seen the movie Terminator 2, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger was walking down this hallway with this big white box under his arm and all of a sudden he opens it up and pulls out this big old rifle and starts shooting up the place. Well, this guy walked in with a box and it looked exactly the same. He has to go through this metal detector and it goes off like a rocket. The whole place lights up, beep, beep, beep. There's a security guy there, luckily for us, that stops him and sends him out the door. So to this day, we're still not 100% sure what was in this box, but if the metal detector goes off, it can't be anything good. So he's out the door and he's waiting in his car. And the three of us are still in this pool room and we're sweating. So after about an hour, he's in the car waiting. We make a plan, right? Dee Dee heads to the car, starts the car, and Dave and me are still inside. And after about an hour, we say, okay, three, two, one. We ran like a couple of gazelles to the car. Dee Dee had it running. We jumped in. Luckily, the guy didn't uh, step on his gas pedal. We drove off and got the hell out of there. So we did another pool room the next day, not much happened. We had a blast, great story came out of it. Didn't win any money. I went on solo again from there, but I will never ever forget that night. It was a thriller and I did not tell my mom about that one. All right, story number two is a drama story, guys. This one's pretty intense. Years ago, I was invited to the Challenge of Champions. I think it was my second time there. And what they had back then was that the local sponsors on the first evening got linked with one of the players and we did a Scotch doubles tournament. It was to entertain the sponsors. We got some social interaction. It was a lot of fun. And I believe it was my second time playing one of these little mini tournaments. And I showed up and I got uh, matched up together with a wheelchair player. 
So I'm uh, saying my name. We we meet each other and we uh, we hit it off uh, for a race to three uh, against I believe it was Corey and one of the other local sponsors. What happens next? I believe the score was two to two. We're on the eight ball. My man's got to shoot the eight ball. It's over the pocket. The cue ball's about in the middle of the table. He was not that good of a player. Doesn't matter. He turns to me. I'm looking at him. He's sitting still in his wheelchair for about two, three seconds, just staring at me straight in the eye. And I'm like, "What? what's going on here? Why is he not shooting? And all of a sudden, this is what happens. <laughs> Boom! He jumps up out of his wheelchair. Apparently, he had a, uh, a little defibrillator, I believe, uh, that was put in his body. He had a cardiac arrest. His heart was stopped beating. His machine went off in his chest. He jumped up out of the chair and he kind of slumped in his seat. So I'm looking at him and I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And the weirdest thing is that nobody did anything around this table. The referee was there. There were spectators. So I'm looking around like we have to help this man. He gets up. He's a little bit fainted. He gets up out of the chair. He says, let me make this ball, kid. We're going to win this game. I said, man, you just had you had just had a heart attack. We got to do something. Let me make this ball. Let me make this ball. He turns around. He shoots the ball. The, remember this. The eight is over the pocket in the corner. He shoots the ball in the shot. He falls on the table. He doesn't see what happens. And he misses the eight. It was, it was heartbreaking. He hangs the eight in the corner. He didn't even sh- see what happened. Apparently, they did call some uh, medical personnel that jumped into the arena, grabbed him, they looked at him, and he said, kid, did I make the ball? I said, yeah, man, you made it, you made it. So I was feeling so bad at this point, and he got carried out on a stretcher, and when when they moved him out, he was waving at me, he said, kid, don't worry about it, we got this. Uh, and I found out two weeks later that he passed away. So that was a super intense uh, story. I will never forget. Uh, There's some funny stories, and this one was actually a really sad story. The third story, let's get the vibe a little bit up again. We're playing the World Championships 8-ball in Fujira in the uh, United Emirates. Always a great place to be there. Lovely weather, great memories there. Won a lot of medals couple of bronze, couple of silvers. Unfortunately, unfortunately, never won the event, but uh, great memories uh, from that place. And one of the additions, uh, I'm playing Ronnie Wiseman, first match. And it's the eight ball. And we're warming up. I'm shooting a couple of stripes, maybe a couple of solids. And the referee walks into the arena. And it was a lady referee, which is a big thing over there because it's mostly uh, the men do the things. And uh, it was really cool that there was a lady referee. Well, she took it really seriously because uh, I shoot a stripe. We're warming up. The next shot I do is a, a solid and she calls foul. So I'm I'm spooked. I'm, I'm like, what's going on? And Ronnie Wiseman in his chair was like, what is this? And the coach, my coach, Johan Ruysink, was there. And he was, what? And the crowd. And all of a sudden, we started laughing. First, I said, did we start already without me knowing it? Or what's going on? So everybody's quiet for 10 seconds. And then everybody there starts laughing, which was an incredibly embarrassing moment for the lady. We didn't make a big deal of it, but it was just hilarious. But... Apparently over there, it was so embarrassing to her that she actually had to leave the building and we had to get another referee, which was really sad for her. So uh, if she sees this, I think she was the owner of the the pool room there in Fujira, Night Shot. We practiced there many times. So I'm just saying hi if you ever see this. Uh, no hard feelings. We just had a blast. And uh, I hope she's still refereeing. It was just a hilarious moment. This story is actually twofold because what a lot of people remember in the World 8-Ball was that there was so many flies in those arenas that we played on. I played Ronnie and I believe I was prepared for this and I'm not exaggerating. I believe I had eight flies 
in that match around the balls on my arms and I knew this was going to happen already and it really sharked Ronnie. He couldn't deal with it, but I already played three, four editions before that. So I knew what to expect. And one year I was in the, I believe, quarterfinals, flies everywhere. They had no spray and I'm shooting a ball on the side and apparently I make the ball, cue ball is rolling forward and an, another bug had interfered with the shot. It landed on the table. So the cue ball's doing, doing this, bloop, and it came back. So everybody's, what? What happened here? So we have a look, we go to the cue ball, and the referee moves the cue ball out of the way a little bit, and I just killed the bug. There was a blood stain on the cloth. The referee had to get a special cloth to clean it, get the bug out of the way, and the match could resume. There was always all kinds of stuff going on there. I remember playing Carl Boyes there in the finals, the finals of the world championships. Of course, the Scheik had to uh, visit to do the ceremony, but he was coming much later in the day, uh, in the evening. But it was a big thing. So they're building an arena. While we're playing the finals in this big hall, they're banging away with cardboard, hammers, drills, boom, boom, boom. And we're playing the finals there. It was just unbelievable. It became a tight match. I believe it was a race to 12. Carl was up. It was close. I had to make a tricky shot on the eight. I believe to make it around 10-9, 11-9, something for him. And when I'm down on the shot on the eight, they start testing the laser system, the stroboscope in the building. They, They start making these tunnels out of the blue without announcing it to anybody. These these things went on. It was like I was in a big club for about a thousand people DJing. And I was shocked. I said, I had to get up. I said, what is this? So they turned the machine off. I still got to make the tough shot on the eight. Made it. Match resumed. But like there was always crazy stuff going on there. So uh, hilarious one to share uh, with you guys on that one. And the fourth and final story, guys, I'm on the road again in the States with my man, George Keyslot. Uh, I told about him in the q and I'll put a link here in the top with another story that I had with him. We're on the road, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the tip was go to Jackson, Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere in those uh, southern regions, they said go to that town. And there's uh, maybe some action over there. So we're driving and it's a Saturday night. I believe it was around 9 or 10 o'clock. Saturday. So normally if you go into a town, into the center of a town on a Saturday night, it's booming, right? There's people everywhere. There's uh, shopping going on, restaurants. It's lively. We drive into this town. It's not a big town. We drive into this town, there's nobody. There is nobody on the roads. There's nobody on the streets, no pedestrians, no cars, nothing. No lights are on. And we're like, what is this? Are we in a movie? So we're driving around, circling around slowly. Everything's dark. And we're getting pretty nervous. Like, what is this kind of place? Did did something happen here? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I said, George, be quiet. And we hear this sound. There was an alarm going off. And to this day, I'm convinced it was some kind of nuclear alarm that went off. So when we heard that, I was, George, are you hearing this? He says, yeah. Is that some, some nuclear alarm? Why would the place be totally deserted? We're talking about a whole town that's dead. No lights, no people, no nothing. George had his gas pedal here. He did this. We were out of there, heading straight to the next town. Crazy story. Saturday night, nobody there. 
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed those little stories from the road and the past. Always good fun to share. Please don't forget to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's lessons and tips here uploaded every week on Wednesdays. This was something different. And if you're interested in the mental side of the game, head over to terminatorcollege.com. Check out all the courses that are waiting there for you. Take care.